Hey guys, today we're back with part 3 of our Atari VCS series. Last week we did our hardware upgrades, maxing out the Atari VCS's memory with 32GB of RAM and installing a 500GB M.2 SATA SSD drive. Today we're going to be installing Windows 10 on the M.2 SSD and playing some games and running some benchmarks. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps our channel grow. And with that being said, we're going to get into it right after this. So first up, to install Windows 10 on the M.2 SSD, we're going to use an M.2 USB adapter. Now we did a lot of research and this seems to be the easiest way to go about it. The adapters aren't too expensive, we got ours on Amazon for around 15 bucks. It's definitely worth it though, because it can be a bit cumbersome trying to get this to work right. Once you get your M.2 drive installed into the adapter, you can plug it into a USB port on your computer. We went ahead and formatted ours so our system would detect the drive. Once the drive was detected, we then downloaded and launched the Windows Media Creation Tool. First thing you want to do is create installation media for another PC. Then you want to make sure you're selecting your correct language, choosing Windows 10, and for architecture you want to do the 64-bit. Next up, when it asks you to choose which media to use, you want to select and create an ISO file. It will then begin the download process. When it's done, go ahead and click on finish. Next, we'll be using the tool Win to USB. We'll leave a link in the description below on where you can find it. First thing we want to do is select our image file, which is the file that we just created with the media creation tool. Once you've choose that, select what version of Windows 10 you want to install. We went with Pro. Next, we'll choose our destination, which will be the M.2 drive in the USB adapter. Then we want to choose GPT for UEFI. The next screen will ask you what installation mode you want to choose. We have a 500 gigabyte M.2 drive, so we're choosing BHDX, so we can utilize the full size of our drive. Then it will begin to install Windows onto your M.2 drive. Once installation is complete, go ahead and exit. Then you want to go ahead and take your M.2 drive out of your USB adapter and install it into the Atari VCS. Then we'll be moving over to the Atari to boot things up. Once you do that, then we're going to go ahead and make a few changes in the BIOS before we move forward. In order to access the BIOS, there is a password that you need to enter. We'll go ahead and display it on screen now. Once you enter the password, you'll be in the BIOS. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and disable that password so we don't have to enter it again. You'll put in the old password and then just leave new password blank. Then we want to head over to AMD CBS. The first options we want to make changes to is the UMC common options. Here is where you can overclock the memory and select the frequency if you have memory that's over the stock. We actually found that 32 gigabytes of RAM cannot be overclocked currently, but if you have anything lower, you should be able to go in and make these changes with no problem. 
Now each of these are at half speed, so if you want to run 32 megahertz, you'll select 1600 megahertz. Once you have that set, we want to back out a couple of screens and go to MBIO Common Options. Then select GFX Configuration. Here we'll change Integrated Graphics Controller to Forces. UMA mode to UMA specified, and then UMA frame buffer size. We'll change it to four gigahertz. Here you can dedicate RAM to the internal Vega 3 graphics. Next, we're gonna go to system configuration and up this setting to 54 watts. This is gonna up the TDP of the CPU. Once all those settings are changed, you can go to exit and exit saving changes. Now in order to boot into the M.2, upon booting the Atari VCS, you're going to hit escape. Here you're gonna select boot manager. Then you'll select Windows boot manager. If this is your first time, it'll take a few minutes to get Windows ready. and then you'll reach the login screen. Then we'll go ahead and bring up the task manager here so you can see that we're running 32 gigabytes at 2400 megahertz. And here you'll see that we have the AMD Ryzen embedded R1606 with Radeon Vega 3 graphics. Now let's get into some games. First up, we're going to be running some games in a few emulators. We're using the Dolphin emulator and we're running Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube. We're running this at 1080p using Direct3D 11. At 1080p, the game was playable, but it had quite a few frame drops, so you may or may not find issue with that but we found it to still be playable. If you want it, you could turn it down to 720p and it will run a lot smoother. Next up is Metroid Prime. At 1080p, this ran pretty smooth and stayed above 30 frames per second. Next up, we're playing some PlayStation 2 games with the PCSX2 emulator. First up, Kingdom Hearts. 
We're running this at Native Graphics and with the Direct3D 11 graphics API. This also ran pretty smooth and for the most part stayed locked at 60 frames per second. Next up is Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal. Now this stayed above 30 FPS as well and ran fairly smooth but had quite a few drops at times. Now we're going to run some Wii U games with the CMU emulator. We're using the OpenGL graphics API and we're running both games at 720p. First up, Super Mario 3D World. For the most part, the game ran fairly smooth with FPS above 30 frames per second. However, there were still some drops. Next up is Super Smash Bros. At 720p, the game still struggled, staying below 30 frames per second. Now for some PC games. First up, Streets of Rage 4, running at high settings. The game looked great and ran smooth, staying around 60 frames per second. Next up, Ori and the Blind Forest running at 720p. This game ran fairly smooth as well, sticking around 60, but at times it did drop down to around 30 frames per second.
Next up, just to throw a triple A title in the mix, we're playing Jedi Fallen Order. We attempted to run this at 1080p, but it was next to impossible to run smoothly, so we went for 720, still below 30 frames per second, however. And we also experienced a number of drop frames. So it's playable, but not optimal. And lastly, after making the changes in the BIOS and installing the 32 gigabytes of memory, we went ahead and ran some benchmarks. Here we ran the Unigen Heaven benchmark. For Unigen, we got an average FPS of 62.9 and a score of 1585, running at 720p. Next, we ran Time Spy at custom settings, running at 720p, and got a graphic score of 13. 1850 and a CPU score of 1812. So that's it guys. In this video we installed a 500GB M.2 SSD SATA drive and installed Windows 10 Pro. Up the memory from 8GB at 24 MHz to 32GB at 24 MHz. We purchased a 32GB 3200MHz memory kit. However, we weren't able to clock the memory at 3200 MHz and get the Atari VCS to boot. We made a number of changes in the BIOS including upping the TDP to 54 watts and dedicating 4 GB of RAM to the Vega 3 graphics. Finally, we applied some Arctic Silver Thermal paste to the CPU as the stock thermal pad is reportedly not that great. All these changes have made the VCS a more capable machine as we were now able to play PC games at 720p and a variety of console emulators. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.